Um, we got brother uh, Fritz Springmeier on. Okay. Uh, praise God. Um, I'm going to give the 40 of Fritz here, but uh, the whole Kanye West scenario, um, it seems to be like the, the real thing in the body of Christ today where you have Christians saying, uh, you know, some are, you know, cheering on Kanye, which praise God if he really did get saved, but what do you think do you the church have a little discernment here? Yeah, the church should have discernment. Uh, the church is lacking discernment, but uh, were you just handing it over to me to talk? Yeah. Or? Yes, definitely. <laughs> okay. Just kind of go into like the, because we know Kanye is a, you know, let's just, you know, he's a multiple, program multiple. Yeah. Um, well, the. I'm not saying multiple can't get saved. I'm just saying, you know, it looks like this might have been planned. Do you think there's something to that? Yeah, I believe so. I believe his handlers decided to make a mockery of uh, Christianity. What you have happening is an apostate church that's controlled from uh, the other side. You, you know, it, 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 it's just like they could take a pig and dress up a pig as a great Christian minister and sell it to the Christian people. It, they could take anything and, and, and within a couple months make that uh, a leader in Christianity. It's rather frightening. Uh, let's go back to the scriptures and uh, take a historical look at what's happened to God's people. Israel was constantly fighting apostasy or God was was dealing constantly with Israel's apostasy and then when we come forward to the New Testament times the apostles were warning us in, in a number of the books including Acts and Corinthians and Galatians were warned about apostates and apostasy coming in to the church and then in prophecy, it's prophesied that in the end times, you know, it even asks the question, will God even find faith when Christ comes back? It's a legitimate question. You know, I mean, uh, what it's implying is, is that the apostasy is going to be such a big falling away that it's going to be hard for God to find hardly anyone that's, that's legitimate. So one of the things that I've been doing over the years is exposing, and I've been very gentle on this, but there's a lot of major Christian leaders that are really wolves in sheep's clothing. And if we ask ourselves, <clears throat> how do we protect ourselves from wolves in sheep's clothing? I mean, you're going to have to have discernment, people, or you just want... You are, don't you care for God's people? I mean, you just want these wolves to come in and, and chew everything apart. That's what's been happening. And then people blame God when it's, when it's the church not using discernment. So, you know, it's important for us to have discernment. Does that mean that I can sit here and judge uh, Kanye West's heart? <coughs> well, <coughs> technically not. Because God is the only one that can see into his heart and know what's happened and, and how God wants to deal with them. That's God's, that's God's uh, department. I would never want to take over God's job. So I'm not in a position to judge his salvation or his conversion, but... I am in a position to use discernment, um, and, it, and it says in the scriptures uh, that by the abundance of a man's heart, that's how he's going to speak. And so we can look at how Kanye West is talking, we can look at what he's doing, and we are, as Christians, in a position to judge those actions and determine whether we see the fruits of the Spirit there, whether there's 
red flags that should warn us about this guy. And, and then uh, also, uh, we should use wisdom. And even if we were to say, okay, this is a true conversion, Christians need to start having more wisdom. And you just don't put someone who's a brand new Christian out there in a leadership position. Yeah. That's just not the way it should be done, you know. And uh, it took a number of years for Paul to be accepted and to get into ministry. He didn't turn right around and, and jump into being a major apostle right after his conversion. So anyway, let's let's look at some of, of this that pertains to Kanye West. But from my vantage point, it's not really the issue is not Kanye West so much as the issue is about the world being able to infiltrate wolves into the Christian flock and they're not and people not wanting to use discernment. Now, what really concerns me about Kanye West is that the world is promoting his uh, so, so-called uh, new birth conversion experience. When do you see the world do that? They hate us. Yeah. You know, um, <laughs> I've seen plenty of Christians, uh, n- newborn Christians <clears throat> who came out of the world. And what happened? All the worldly friends reject them. They hate on yep. them. No, the news media doesn't pick up and herald them. And David Letterman ha- uh, talk about how great a guy he is. Hmm. No, that's not what happens. All their friends leave them, forsake them. And the news media is not going to talk at all about them. The news media, uh, you know, has not wanted to talk about me at all. And, oh, yeah. um, and you know all of the the rubbish that's said about me. Even oh, by yeah, they lie about you, slander you, all kinds of stuff. Oh, yeah. It, it's, yeah. So this is your... Even among the, so-called Christians and, you know, deceived Christians, you know. Yeah, so this is the reaction. You don't get the whole world, you know, drumming up support and praising you. And so he has, has these so-called Sunday services, but he was talking about these Sunday services before he became converted. So you have to wonder <laughs> about this whole thing. <clears throat> he tried and, to start a um, religion around himself called Yeezyanity. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, he's his his ego is still intact because his album that came out that's this Christian music is saying uh, to paraphrase that he's swearing on God that he is the greatest musical artist ever to be, um, <laughs> and, you know. So if we ask ourselves where does apostasy come in? One of the biggest issues revealing apostasy is pride. That was the issue that got Lucifer cast out of heaven was pride. And uh, Kanye has had an enormous issue with pride. Before he was converted, he was claiming to be God with the big G. And... um, uh, he, he was claiming to be a monster. And, of course, as you know, and our listeners probably know, before he converted, he publicly told people that he had sold his soul to, to the devil and he was promoting Lucifer. So he's definitely hardcore uh, uh, Luciferian. And then this, and, and if you know hardcore Luciferians, uh, one, you've got uh, you've got a thread of mind control running through here, but you've also got with these kind of people a a thread of in the tapestry of pride, and you also have a, th- a big thread in the tapestry of deceit. Uh, these people are are commonly known for deceit, being prideful, self-centered, and 
and then the world if you watch the world the world is supportive of them you know the world uh backs them for instance the u.s army get uh, open the doors for the church of satan you know um michael aquino who was was a former member of the church of satan and then created his own church of set yep uh, a, a outright Luciferian that would parade around in in Luciferian costumes and had the backing know. of a supposedly Christian uh, general, Paul Vallely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you know, it, people Christians need to realize that people coming from this kind of a background are willing to lie and deceive. Especially if they've been uh, uh, subjected to trauma-based mind control, uh, and that's too big of a subject to really open up that whole thing. But I, what I might just say is, is trauma-based mind control works off of multiple person personality disorder. So it's we're, we're talking Kanye West is a multiple. So it's very likely his programmers have been, you know, writing this script. And at some point they decided to take an alter. That means a a particular personality that would be willing to convert. They gave a conversion experience to this uh, alter. And this alter is dissociated from all the satanic garbage. And so it thinks it's a Christian. Unfortunately, in today's uh, widespread culture of apostasy, there's lots of fake Christians out there that will tell uh, Kanye West that he's uh, a a good Christian, even though he's promoting a gospel of syncretism. You want to talk about that? Um, yeah, let's talk about that because he never explained the gospel. He, there's no, you never hear the word. Uh, he'll say Jesus died for your sins, but he never mentions Jesus lived a sinless life, was born of a virgin, was buried and resurrected, and that's the only way to salvation by grace through faith. He'll just say the Mormons have Jesus too, and cap. Yeah, let's go into that. You know, there's, right? Because there's only one well, Jesus. Yeah, exactly. So years ago. I had a ministry. I was a missionary for Witness Incorporated for 10 years. Uh, what I was a missionary to was uh, particularly, specifically Jehovah's Witnesses, which is, is a cult. Yeah, but I'm a former Jehovah's Witness. Also, uh, yeah. I used to be a Jehovah's Witness before I got saved. I think you know that. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. I know it's a bad, you know, I mean, they believe Jesus is Michael the Archangel and. You know, I, I've even had some witnesses tell me that, yeah, Jesus is Satan's brother. It's like, the yeah, Lord. so. Yeah, yeah, I, I've had that, too. And, and then while I was specifically to the Jehovah's Witnesses, I also dealt some with Mormons and other cults. Um, and I know it's it's controversial to use the word cult. But that's uh, what these are. You know, Charles well, Day's Russell rejected in, in a sense. Yeah, he yeah, rejected it, all of Christian foundational doctrines. Yeah, and they're proud of it. That's what. That's why they believe they're um, the true church is they've rejected Christianity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But so, I, I guess I get what you're saying because they are religions. Uh, since I, I guess like because cult technically could mean like a small group, like a branch Davidian type of. Thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. There, there's different definitions of what a cult is, but uh, so you know, it it's at times I kind of wrestled with using that word, but it's probably um, a, a a proper way of defining these groups because if you start looking really at what they're all about. For instance, the Jehovah's Witness does not think for himself, but he just parrots whatever the Watchtower Society says. And 
um, they're not allowing the scriptures to speak to them through the Holy Spirit to speak to them through the word of God. Um, so anyway, for Kanye West to say that these people are Christians too, that really puts him in line with the Illuminati's agenda to create a one world church, which is real loosey goosey where everybody's accepted except hardcore Christians that are exclusive and don't want to accept uh, witches and Catholics and, and, and uh, Unitarians and other things. It's like an attack on the fundamentals of the faith. Yeah, it is. And so that's why he's promoting. And so whether he's wittingly or unwittingly promoting this, uh, he's definitely being used as a tool for his handlers to, uh, to reduce the effectiveness of the Christian faith. Well, so, I mean, we could see him split hell wide open. We don't know what he's going to say next. Oh, yeah. And he shouldn't be in a leadership position. From what I understand is Sunday services are by invitation only. And the kind of people that have gone to them are your typical Hollywood uh, stars. Some of these people are, you know, uh, um, the LGBT cr crowd. Um, they're they're uh, seriously um, <laughs> <laughs> out of line with, with, with traditional Christianity. Yeah, and another thing I noticed about him was that he only invites other celebrities. You don't see him, like, you know, trying to get lost sinners saved. In fact, he's, like, saying, oh, the LGBT, come, you know, and, and, and flaunt your lifestyle, you know? Yeah. He's almost, like, encouraging them, um, you know, in that lifestyle instead of telling them it's sin and they need a savior. Right. Because, I mean, I've never heard him give an altar call. I mean, even though altar calls aren't exactly biblical, but you get what I mean. He's never told people that they're sinners and that they needed Jesus, you know? Yes. And I, you know, another aspect of this is no matter how dark and how convoluted and warped the gospel is that he's preaching, God is capable of using any seed. Um, it's true. just, ah, uh, you know, God used apostates to bring people to Christ. The problem is, is generally, if somebody's planting bad seed, you're going to get a bad crop. Yeah. And um, this, this uh, Kanye West should not be placed in a leadership position. Yeah, he's uh, a new convert, uh, supposedly at least. So right. why why would we he become a pastor out of nowhere? You know this makes no sense at all. You know, yeah, this is a total lack of discernment uh, in the Christian church. But the people that are endorsing them are <laughs> apostate ministers and apostate ministries, and the world. This should raise genuine red flags that this guy is not who he's pretending to be. Um, yeah. I mean, he was in a Beelzebub uh, costume. Have you seen that one? I haven't seen it, but I heard that for Halloween, he was pretty spooky. Yeah. And I think, um, I don't know if that was taken after his supposed conversion or during uh, or before, but um, it's, if it, you know, either way, things aren't looking right. When you kind of add all the puzzle pieces together, something's really off. And it came out of nowhere after he supposedly had a mental breakdown in a psychiatric facility. Yeah, and he had a hiatus where he was gone for a while. And then the, and then when he reappears, he's a Christian. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I Everything I have seen has just raised red flags. And um, I'll leave 
uh, the good Lord to be the final judge of his salvation. But I definitely am given uh, scriptural advice to use discernment and and everything that I know from having researched the occult and been familiar with the Illuminati and their mind control, everything uh, warns me that that this guy is a dangerous wolf in sheep's clothing. Yeah. Um, so now that we kind of got that down um, on Kanye, I was wondering if you wanted to kind of speak on China and the whole Belt Road Initiative. And, uh, you know, now I'm also hearing rumors that Eric Prince is trying to privatize the military. And now America, instead of, you know, rebuilding our own destroyed infrastructure, is trying to go and rebuild other countries' infrastructure. Something seems a little off about that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, l let's see uh, how to introduce this big subject of China. You know, uh, a lot of people don't understand some of the basics. Uh, Red China is a still a communist nation, and the Communist Party owns the government. They There's 90 million Communist Party members in China, and they appoint whoever's going to be in the government. So it's not like the government is communist, but it's the communists who own the government. Not only do they own the government, but the Communist Party owns the military. And, and um, so we're, and, and when the Communist Party got started back there with people like Mao Zedong, they, the, the core group that founded it, idolized Stalin. And if you have an idea, people, of history and what Stalin was all about, you have an idea of the mentality of these people, which is why in the Cultural Revolution and other times in China's history, the Communist Party has ruthlessly, just like Stalin, killed millions of their own people. And um, so, you know, and, and people have been saying, well, if we open up and, and we treat China nice, they're going to become a democratic government like the United States. Well, that's just, uh, that, that's pie in the sky thinking that's not realistic and it's not uh, taking a look at what's been happening. So the Communist Party, uh, the Chinese Communist Party has as its goal to make the 21st century China's century, they want to be the dominating world power, similar to Nazi Germany wanted to be the world's dominating power. If you think back to Hitler and the Nazi party and their mentality, that's what we're dealing with, with red China. It's that kind of people, that kind of mentality. Lebensraum. Uh, pardon me? Lebensraum, like a life, life, um, what was it, um, living space. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Like expanding. And they're trying to expand. Expanding. China, Red China has been expanding for years um, at the expense of their neighbors. You know, uh, I lived many years ago in Asia. I had the privilege of talking to the general, uh, the Indian general who fought the Chinese when the Chinese decided to take over part of India back in 1961. Uh, I asked him, well, why did they win? He said there were just too many of them. And um, that's, that's part of their military strength is they're willing to, just like in the Korean War, sacrifice large numbers of, of men, just like the Soviets did in World War II. And um, that makes it hard for any of their neighbors to, uh, to compete with them on a military basis. 
So they've intimidated all of their neighbors. Do you think uh, that... Well, actually, I'm going to let you continue, but there is a question I have for you here. Oh, go ahead. Okay, do you think that they're intentionally maybe sabotaging America's infrastructure? Like, you know, we see the California fire, stuff like that, and we're... You know, it almost looks like a directed energy weapon was used. No, no trees were harmed. All the homes where the people were, you know, cars and stuff on the road were on fire, but the trees weren't harmed. And, you know, we're supposed to think that's normal. Um, and, you know, we're, we know that Agenda 2030 is about deindustrializing the West. And China is reindustrializing, and now the U.S. is saying we need to rebuild the global infrastructure. We're going to stay overseas, but we're not going to stay and work on our own country. Something seems a little wrong with that. You know, New York City's collapsing, for example. Yeah, definitely the Chinese are trying to undermine us and destroy us. And uh, they and see they're almost being enabled by the tech companies and stuff here. I mean. Seattle, San Francisco, I mean, uh, on and on. Yes. Uh, there's three kinds of war that the Chinese leadership recognize. And one is would be your information war propaganda. Another one uh, would be um, uh, an economic war. And the third would be an actual shooting war, which is called a kinetic war. Um, and uh, they have been waging the first two wars against us. They have been uh, undermining the American people's confidence in our government. They've been trying to make themselves look better in our press. They've been buying politicians. They have been... Um, yeah, and then I I really think too that that behind the scenes they have done things to undermine our stability and structure. Uh, just like the Illuminati, they're kind of working both ends against the middle, um, because they have bought 1.7 trillion dollars last I heard of U.S. Treasury securities. Which they have more U.S. Treasury securities than any other nation. So if they if they would want to, they could pull the rug out from underneath our economy very easily. And we have made ourselves very dependent upon them. And so uh, it, it, it's just a point in time. When are they going to? the pull the plug and let us go down the drain. Um, Do you think um, <clears throat> perhaps they might you know, try that anytime soon or? Well, <clears throat> if we look at what they're doing, they have done the, the steps I see them doing is the same thing that Hitler did. Uh, go back in history. What did Hitler do at, to start with? He took over land that was traditionally German land. He marched into yeah. the Rhineland. He took over the Saar. He, he marched into the Sudeten land. He marched into Austria. He, he, uh, he attacked Poland to get Danzig. And uh, these were all traditional parts of Germany. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, so the red Chinese have done the same thing you know they took over border areas that India had they, they have taken over Macau they have taken over Hong Kong uh, they have uh, they're now claiming the South China Sea and they've built seven or eight large military airfields there to uh, keep, uh, make sure, ensure that nobody can take the South China Sea away from them. These were artificial I islands that they built in the South China Sea. So they've done the first step that Hitler did, and that is reclaim uh, areas that, that were traditionally German and um, 
China's China's been doing that. And then what did Hitler do? He rearmed. And China has been rearming. And the way they have been rearming is building up a, an offensive capability. We're not talking a defense capability, but we're we're talking about an offense capability. As you're probably aware, they've recently deployed throughout China a DF-21D hypersonic missile that goes at Mach 10. Pardon me? Yeah. It's a type of cruise missile. It, it goes it's at a hypersonic it goes, speed. Yeah. And we can, oh, our defenses can only handle something going at Mach 5. So yeah. they can go right through our ability to defend. Yeah. It goes beyond Mach speed. Pardon me? It goes beyond Mach speed, that missile. Yeah, it's Mach 10. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's uh, got a range of 1,242 miles, reportedly. Um, so that's that gives uh, where it's deployed. <coughs> uh, if they wanted to, they now have the ability to do a first strike and take out all of our super aircraft carriers. And then uh, they will soon have three aircraft carriers. They have two aircraft carriers now. And they're, they're working on building up a fleet of aircraft carriers. They've been working on building up uh, uh, submarines in the past they had diesel submarines but they're working to have nuclear submarines like we so they're they, they have developed the ability to uh, take out our military and civilian satellites in space they're they're they just opened up a base in Africa in Djibouti um, they did uh, joint naval exercises with the Iranians in the Strait of Hormuz I mean, these are offensive steps. This is not a nation that's that's uh, just trying to protect itself. This is a nation that's getting prepared to ha to attack. Yeah. It, it. In fact, do you think uh, China and the Illuminati are both competing for you know world dominance? And well, and that's that's an interesting question. I don't think so, because when I talked with uh, these Illuminati kingpins, mm -hmm. they were they were saying that they were in favor of what China was doing, that they had opened up China, and they had opened China up to business, and then they they had built it up, and that makes perfect sense because communist economies are basket cases. And you yeah. just don't jump from being a basket case to being a leader in the world. They had to get technical and economic help to become the, the competitor that they are. And according to the Illuminati, they gave them that specifically. And if we understand Hegelian dialectics, it makes sense. You know, uh, they're building up China to be the number one threat to America. Um, and that's that will give them lots of leverage if one understands uh, the dialectical process. That, yeah. And that's their and, and they're, it's the I could see it's the dialectical process playing off again, communism versus capitalism. Um, and right. then they're going to bring them together in the synthesis. Yeah, exactly. So... Um, that's actually, uh, where do you think Russia plays in all this, um, in Israel? I'm going to move a little bit because I, the sun moved and I ended up in the, <laughs> with the sun in my eyes. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, India and Russia are, are, are still powerful military uh, entities. Uh, Russia is a, a total basket case economically. <laughs> India has been expanding 
economically, and it's been quietly building up its military. And uh, India and Russia and China have been in alliance together. Yeah, BRICS. And, um, pardon me? Was it BRICS? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. And um, uh, Russia and China have uh, done joint military operations together. Uh, right now, we get approximately a fourth of our generic drugs from India, but almost all of the drugs India produces, the uh, precursors, the active ingredients, active pharmaceutical ingredients of what India sells us come from China. So, uh, so you not only have that uh, 24.5% generic drugs coming from India that actually came from China. But China is directly selling almost 9%. So a lot of us, our drugs are, are coming. That would be, if you add it together, over 33% of our generic drugs are coming from China. And um, United States has stopped producing penicillin and uh, some of our big pharma are now relocating to China. Wow. So uh, China's, one of China's goals is to strip the United States of, of our big pharma capabilities and um, relocate it to China. Now, they have done that with a number of other things. So a large share of our machinery that we buy, our ele ele electronic machinery and our other machinery comes from China. But if you take, for instance, books, our publishing business uh, produces their books almost entirely in wow. China. So we can't even produce <coughs> our own books. That's um, Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Um, I remember reading documents that went back, I think, to the 50s. Um, like, I think it was the Naked Communist. Uh, do you remember that one? It was a FBI informant or something uh, where they said that they were going to open up trade to China and deindustrialize the U.S. And uh, John Coleman in Committee of 300 talks about that. Um, and there were, you know, um, there was the Richard Day, Lawrence Dunnigan. Uh, um, you know, the Dr. Richard Day meeting where all these technocrats met up and um, they basically discussed how they're going to change the United States culturally and sell our jobs overseas and um, you know, promote all kinds of the degenerate behavior and get rid of the Bible out of schools. And um, So they were talking about China back in the 50s uh, and even, you know, 60s, you know, way before today, and it's happening today. So it looks like they planned ahead for it. Oh, yeah. These things have been planned a long time ago. Um, yeah. I mean, you can and, look at, uh, but continue. Yeah. No, go ahead. Oh, yeah. I was saying you could even look at uh, certain movies and uh, uh, science fiction novels where they show the very things that we're seeing today, uh, including deindustrialization. Yeah. Well, and, you know, uh, at the bicentennial, uh, the United States became a nation in 1776. So 200 years later was the bicentennial in 1976. While we were celebrating, pardon me, Oh, no, continue. I didn't say anything. While we were celebrating our bicentennial, our congressmen were betraying us and came up with a declaration of interdependence where they pledged us, the United States, to becoming interdependent with all the rest of the globe. Well, if, if you're a globalist, just think what that does 
if the United States no longer is independent, but we're dependent on everybody else. You know, our steel manufacturing has left us. And all these other things that I was talking about, you know, our book production and um, producing machinery, it's all left us. So we're dependent. Yeah, uh, they, they've creates, enslaved us. Yeah, that creates an uh, interdependence. And that's what they pledged themselves to. And that was open. Oh. Pardon me? And that was open. Oh, yeah. Well, it was low key, but it was open. Yeah. Yeah. It's they they you just kind of, yeah they don't put it on the front page of the new york times but yeah it, it's it's there if you scratch a little yeah like that's something you could look up now with the case of uh, the naked communist which was a book from the 50s which people were buying back then it gave like a, a 10 point thing of what they were going to do including you know free trade with like every single country imaginable regardless of what they're doing or if they're friendly to the United States or not, you know? Yeah. So, uh, you know, when Trump became president, he said this era of surrender to the Chinese has ended. And he was, that's exactly, that was one of the steps that led Hitler to power was appeasement and the Illuminati and their little puppets in the United States have been, appeasing <coughs> sorry <coughs> have been appeasing red china so we've been making these lopsided trade arrangements where the chinese just take total advantage of us and um uh the, you know uh thanks to trump we've ended this era of appeasement temporarily at least while he's he's president um but in the past yeah they were they were stripping us and building china up wow and, and, well, and we, go on i i just ask why is this happening you know why is the illuminati doing this and then uh recently on that thread on my last post about china somebody asked well how can the Illuminati trust China? You know, they're xenophobic and they're nationalistic. And how can they trust them to do what the Illuminati want? But in talking with these Illuminati kingpins, I got this. It was the same kind of quiet assurance that I have seen bankers have. You know, when a yes. banker loans you a loan, he sits back and he smiles at you yeah. and he's got this smugness that, you know, he knows things are in control and you, yeah, you can be his hands together. in your head. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I may not pay this back. I mean, I might get sick and not pay this back. How can you be sure that I'm going to return your money? But they, they have confidence that they have things in control. They, they, yeah. have, they have the strings to come out on top. And uh, the red, Chi red Chinese leaders know the kind of power that they're dealing with. I don't know myself all of the strings that the Illuminati can pull, but uh, obviously the the Chinese leadership know where which side the the bread is buttered on. So they know it's buttered for the Illuminati. Um, but. I was going to ask you this, um, on the topic of transhumanism, there's actually a brother in Christ I want to give a shout out to, uh, Wayne Morin Jr. Are you familiar with him? Okay, um, he actually, uh, had a question for you about the cloning and transhumanism. Could you kind of, like, is that ties into China? As we know, China now said, I think that they genetically engineered a little girl or something. Um, but I just, yeah, I'm not too sure on that myself. Um, maybe you could go into detail there. Have you looked at Yeah, that? China has been putting a lot of research into genetics and in some ways are leading that area. It's really hard for me to know exactly where research is at because, as you know, uh, they're probably 
30, 40 years behind, uh, I mean, uh, ahead of what the public knows the research to be. And uh, uh, people that were in the Illuminati as children were telling me they were taking, taken to the deep underground military bases here in the United States and showed people, shown people that were cloned or weird monsters that had been genetically created. So I can't say with any uh, surety just where China relates to us, but publicly, uh, what, what I do know is, is what's publicly been revealed, they have more genetic information on Americans than the American government does. They have been accumulating a lot of the genome of Americans, and uh, they've been doing a lot of research into creating things genetically. So, and the question's a good one. I mean, it's very easy. It's easy to picture that this totalitarian regime over there is going to do some of the same things that Hitler tried to do, which was yeah. to create a master race. I mean, why wouldn't these totalitarian, uh, the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party leadership, why wouldn't they want to create a master Chinese race? You know, they yeah. already consider themselves the master race anyway, just like the Germans did. Yeah. Um, and I mean, even... You know, if we look back in scripture with the Genesis 6, you know, I mean, this has been the agenda from the beginning. And we know the Illuminati now wants to put out the promote this idea of merging with machines and that you're going to become God if you, you know, join up with the computers. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the next steps there. They've been promoting that a lot so that people want it. Yeah. Cyborgs. Are are you familiar with the whole Unabomber fiasco back in the seventies, eighties, nineties? I think. Um, well, well, Ted Kaczynski was very intelligent, and yes, he, he was. He was a genius. If people have ever read his manifesto, they might have a, a more of a, a kind feelings towards him. Because yeah. what he was. Oh, I've got a helicopter coming over me. I'm sorry. It's going to make a lot of noise. Um, <coughs> why don't I just... Uh, you want to talk for a minute? Because I, I'm going to be drowned out by this helicopter. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Ted Kaczynski, uh, you know, was a very intelligent man. And um, he spoke of... Uh, genetic engineering of children and stuff, which would be in the future. And he said that the uh, elites, he doesn't use the word Illuminati, but we, you know, that's pretty much, you know, who he's talking about. Um, he says that the scientific elite would basically decide that um, if there were oh so many people on the planet and, you know, once they've had all the resources pretty much gathered, you know, well, we don't need all these useless eaters now. So the elite might decide, let's, you know, kill off half of humanity through some kind of bioweapon or through, um, you know, engine, cultural engineering to make them not want to have kids, basically, is what I got. Like, well, I you know what? Yeah. What he said that they were going to do sounds a lot like what the... Illuminati kingpins told me they want to do so. <laughs> he was he was on target. Uh, and, and you you um I know you read the manifesto. What was uh your whole summation of him? Um, I've read it too, but I, I just wanted to kind of get uh. I actually I'm trying to look for that quote. I actually have it uh, on print here. Um, or I had. I, I, I believe he had legitimate concerns. But what he uh, did was wrong. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, what he did was wrong, but the concerns were still legitimate. Right. Um, as a Christian, and I'm trying to follow uh, 
the you know Yahweh, Yeshua, the and the God of the Bible. Um, yeah, Jesus Christ. You know, at, right. As I'm trying to follow that and his and Christ's teachings, I have to reject uh, some of the ideas that he had. Exactly. But I understand his concerns. Yeah. Um, we need to remember as Christians, uh, spirit-led, born-again Christians, uh, God-fearing Christians, that God's in control, and yeah. he set up a two-world system. He's, he's got the kingdom of God, and, and the then there's the devil. world. Yeah, the yeah. kingdom of Satan. It says in the scripture that Satan is the god of this world, and he's going to appear as a angel of light. Well, he certainly does look like an angel of light already to his minions. Oh, yeah. um, and unfortunately, the apostate church is going to fall for him, too. Uh, and, and if you think of what an angel of light looks like, if you ha if our listeners were, were had an angel of light appear before them, if you think in the uh, what that being would look like, you would want to fall down and worship them because they're so yeah. incredible. And Satan is going to appear that incredible. So that relates back to Kanye West. I mean, we're warned that these wolves in sheep's clothing, including the Antichrist and Lucifer, are going to appear very uh, like angels of light. So this is what we're... This is what we have to be prepared to have discernment for. Yeah. Um, and that's why I mentioned Ted Kaczynski, because that guy, because I see him kind of being shared around a lot of anti-New World Order circles. And I agreed with a lot of what he said in the manifesto, but his solutions are very unbiblical in a lot of cases. Um, but uh, the reason why I'm mentioning him is I thought of a recent thing. Do you think that the Illuminati could even engineer a false anti-Illuminati so-called messiah to make it look like they've been defeated, you know, and like put some kind of blame, blame, you know, game on some little like fake Illuminati members and that, or people that are lower level members, like arrest all these lower level members of the Illuminati and then have the Antichrist take over and, you know, they get the new world order anyway. But the yeah. people think they defeated the Illuminati. Yeah, some people think that that Trump's an example of that, you know, that, you know, he said he was going to uh, clean the uh, swamp out and that he's really part of the swamp. Um, yeah, definitely. You, uh, one of the things that over the years and in these decades of researching the Illuminati and watching how they work, they have plots within plots within plots. Very complex scripts. It's it's hard to sort out, you know, what's going on. And they try to stay one one step ahead of their opposition. If you think of martial arts, martial yeah. arts is a good um, way to understand uh, the Illuminati, and that is. <clears throat> If your opponent is coming at you in martial arts, you deflect his strength. You don't go head to head and, and and negate it, but rather you redirect it. And so they know how people think and they know what people's concerns are. And so they take those concerns and redirect it so that it will benefit their agenda. So, yeah, uh, I could see them taking our concern about a new world order and redirecting it to to establish their. And we've uh, seen communism order. in history has done that. Yeah. The communists always were complaining about the global bankers. Yeah. And I mean, Hitler, even, you know, he was complaining about the Zionists, you know. So, I mean, we, we, we know the Illuminati have manipulated people in the past. And the reason why I mentioned um, there's some people out there, I don't think this, but I've seen people trying to promote China as some kind of alternative to the New World Order. And I'm like, China's killing Christians. 
they're harvesting organs. I mean, it is almost like a beta test for the New World Order. The UN praises China, just like they praise Kanye West. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, uh, you, you saw my post recently where I was quoting the Council on Foreign Relations, Foreign Affairs. And they, in there, <clears throat> there was a number of places where they said that China has become the leader of globalism and that they're, they've in, in, increased uh, in having a voice uh, in global affairs. So they're, they're recognizing or they're, they're approving that China would, would, would be stepping in to carry out their agenda. That's amazing. Well, even if, a, let's say, an EMP went off in the United States, right? Who would take over from there? You know, it's total chaos, anarchy. Americans are shooting each other. You know, people are eating each other. I mean, it's just completely crazy. They would probably have China come in, take over the West Coast. That's a good point. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's a big UN group. Yeah, you probably saw the maps that the United Nations had created on if something like that happened, what nations were to send troops to United States to yep. patrol, to, to uh, bring order out of chaos. You've probably seen those maps. Yeah. And China was given uh, a large part of Western United States. That's amazing. Um. Uh, there's another thing I kind of wanted to go into here. This is actually a document, and we know China is the the planned parenthood republic almost. They're forced abortion. I, I think they I don't know if they stopped that are they still doing that or the controlled population policy? Uh, well, it's a more gentler rule now. Uh, they they were strictly enforcing a law that you could only have one child, mm -hmm. which meant that uh, women were being, uh, or not women, but uh, female babies were being aborted, uh, and, and male babies were were about all that was being born because people wanted their their line to continue. And uh, if you want your family line to continue, you have to have a boy and that's and you're only allowed one boy. Well, that's so. But that's continuing, even though it's not rigidly enforced as a law. Uh, a lot of that's continuing. But what's interesting about this, too, is, is where are all these feminists? You know, oh, you don't yeah. see any feminists uh, protesting all of these aborted uh female babies a lot of them probably support china yeah you know like you know they're all it's, communists yeah th they're socialists yeah. yeah this is the insanity of the liberals the liberals um there's no consistency no morality it's just they whatever's politically correct they support yeah. It's, and basically, whatever's politically correct is always usually whatever's against what the Bible says, you know, they're for it. It's like um, they, uh, I, think, I can't remember what state it was. Do you remember the Baphomet statue? I think it's in multiple states now. They've had Baphomet statues erected. I think one even next to the Ten Commandments. Yeah, I don't know what state that was. Was it in the South? It might have been. Might have been. It might have even been Michigan. I can't recall yeah but, yeah i it, i don't recall either um but the fact is there's a baphomet statue that people can go up and visit now so it's, that's america today you know <clears throat> could you imagine like 50 years ago if you know some satanist just came out of the woodwork and said hey let's have a baphomet statue put up i mean it's just yeah bizarre yeah. i mean it's I mean, it's almost like the image of the beast kind of stand. I'm not saying that's what that Baphomet statue is. I'm just saying, 
it's out in the open now. It's like it's almost like we're in ancient times where there's massive paganism. You know, I mean, it's always been there underground. Aleister Crowley, I think, said that he wanted to infiltrate his people in government. And, but um, the document I have here uh, was a memorandum to Bernard Berelson. Uh, he was president of the Population Council, I think, in uh, 1969, um, or in the, in 69, the late 60s, early 70s, and um, it's called Activities Relevant to the Study of Population Policy for the U.S. Uh, by Frederick S. Jaffa, Vice President of Planned Parenthood World Population, and he talks about in this document, which was written in like uh, the early 60s, late 70s, around that time, uh, it says... Uh, they want to restructure the family by postponing or avoiding marriage. They want to alter the image of ideal family size, uh, compulsory education of children, like we're seeing with the trannies, encourage increased homosexuality, uh, family limitation, fertility control agents in the water supply is one of the things mentioned, and there's a, a bunch of other things <coughs> in here as well. Uh, and encourage women to work was another thing. So, yeah. They're, they're killing us with a thousand different ways. Yeah. Uh, they're trying to neuter us a thousand different ways. Yeah. They're trying to uh, create these death traps in, with our food and yeah. uh, dra death traps with the vaccinations. Yeah. Uh, there are so many different things that they're doing, uh, you know, and... You've seen me write a number of health articles over the last year or so. I haven't been able to write very much because, um, as you know, I've been working six days a week uh, yeah. trying to uh, raise a family. Yeah, I have I've been a beautiful pretty, uh, family. busy, too, with, with work and stuff. And, you know, that's why I thought, like, it would be great to kind of, you know, you know, talk again, you know, I thought this was great, you know, praise God for this, but uh, continue, brother, you know. Yeah, this is a real privilege to be on here, uh, and I won't have this kind of an opportunity very often, so I'm glad to be, uh, I'm glad that I had this opportunity to come on and talk to your viewers. <clears throat> Hopefully, I'll say something that's uh, edifying. Um yeah. The, yeah, you walk into a store, and I hate to say this, but almost essentially everything has been tainted. And um, all of your prepared food has MSG. MSG dumbs you down. It destroys your brain. And uh, I used to think that it was only people that were allergic to MSG until I studied it out further. And they're hiding the MSG as an ingredient under all kinds of different labels, including natural flavoring. Check out all the things that are processed food that say natural flavoring, including, uh, for instance, you have fruit juices, and they'll have the ingredients, this fruit juice, this fruit juice, this fruit juice, maybe four or five fruit juices, and then natural flavoring. And you ask yourself, why do they need natural flavoring if they have five different fruit juices combined? Yeah. Yeah, it's like, if it's natural, why do you have to say natural flavoring? That's <laughs> a little weird. Yeah, so uh, that's just one of the many things that they've done to our food supply. Uh, another thing is <clears throat> they have taken agriculture away from the family farm, which was part of their uh, agenda to destroy the family, was to destroy the family farm. Yeah. They have taken that away. So you're, you used to have a lot of family dairy farms, and they're just completely going out of business. Up in Wisconsin, this year, there's been three dairy farms a day going bankrupt. And out of wow. business. And that's the dairy um, state. Yeah. And so what you have happening is, is in place of those family dairy farms, you have these mega, like around here, 
where I'm, I'm living in Kansas, you now have a number of dairies in this area which are milking 4,000 or 10,000 cows. This is, this is insanity. Um, yeah. These things are huge and they're lacing. <coughs> they're putting hormones into the cows to make them produce large amounts of milk and that those hormones go into the milk and then if as you know uh the hormones in a human a, a person's body are very critical to how we function yep. and they're messing that up endocrine uh, systems being destroyed yeah they're messing up our 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 hormones so you can't even trust uh, dairy products and milk anymore. And then they've outlawed raw milk, which is very healthy, so that we can't turn around and and get something healthy. Pretty insidious. Yeah. And in New Jersey, um, you know, this is one of the states where they have banned uh, raw milk. This is, uh, you know, where I am. I, I don't know about the case in Kansas up there. Yeah, uh, raw milk is outlawed. It has to be their their standard uh, ag business milk yeah. if you're going to sell it. What do you think, uh, you know, Christians in America can do uh, to kind of get around the Illuminati's? Of course, I mean, pray over your food, you know, if it's being cursed. I mean, because we even know, like, Bill Schneblin, who was a former witch, even said they would go into the grocery stores and, like, put curses on the food and stuff. Well, prayer is definitely good because it shows that a person's depending on God. And, and it really, ultimately, it, it's kind of interesting. I keep moving, and that sun keeps moving. Um, so, by the way, interrupting myself, how long were we going to talk? Did you um, have a... We're almost going to wrap up, but I do kind of want to get into, like, what can we do about the food? And I kind of wanted to address uh, this. Teens are spending nearly half their waking hours on screens, and uh, that can have scary lasting effects. Yes, it can. But, um, well, <clears throat> yeah. The first thing we need to do is strengthen our faith, because yep. it says in the scripture that faith overcomes the world, you know, or by extension, faith overcomes the world order. Or if you want to think that this is new, which it isn't, faith overcomes the new world order. So faith, we, if you don't have faith, you're not going to challenge things and you're not going to have yeah. to be touched. You're not going to be in tune with the answer, which the ultimately the answers come from God. Yeah. And they have, if you look in the, in the word of God, how did men of faith challenge the world back then? It was, it was through faith. You know, Noah, Moses, all these people. How did Moses challenge the great power of the world back then, Egypt? It was through faith. It, you know, yeah. technically, yeah, technically, if you looked at the situation, which Moses did at one point, there, there's no way that someone like Moses, who was out and, uh, you know, with his uh, father-in-law Jethro out there in the Sinai, could have challenged the world superpower. But through faith, he was able to do that. And other men, through faith, were able to challenge the world order of their time. And so we need faith. You need to have, you need to know that Romans 8.28 is the truth all things work together for good to those who love god and are called according to his purpose so you have to keep your your faith also hope is a bridge to the future <clears throat> people need to have hope if people don't have hope they're not going to move forward and try to have answers um so you need to have hope and you need to have faith those are important <laughs> Those well, are says, fundamental uh, things that a lot of people are weak in. And then when we have those and we start moving forward, 
you need to have the Holy Spirit show you how to what the answers are. You know how so oftentimes we wonder, what's the answer to this problem? And then we go to sleep, and while we're sleeping, our minds are actually not totally asleep. Our minds are working on the problem. We wake up and we have the solution. Well, likewise, we have problems and we're wondering, well, how can we deal with this? Well, the Holy Spirit can give us wisdom. The Holy Spirit can open up doors where we see none. So we're, we're having to look supernaturally to God, which is what Yeshua's name means. Yeshua means God is salvation. Our salvation is going to come from God. We're not going to be able to save ourselves. Yeah, um, we can't. No. Yeah. Uh, I even wanted to throw in that it says, and these all having obtained a good report through faith received not the promise, God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Right. So it's talking about, you know, the different, you know, it goes into Samson, and that's Hebrews 11. And it was all by faith that these people received a good report. You know, it wasn't, you know, I mean, if there's a lot of people uh, like into the new age stuff that they think they're fighting against the new world order. But, you know, you can't really, it's really not new. Like you said, it's really the old world order. It's Babylon. It's Nimrod. It's, you know, it's really Lucifer's world order going back to the, you know, the fall, you know, <clears throat> it's the, ye shall be as God's knowing good and evil world order. That's, yeah, you know, imprisoned the world, you know, it, you know, and people are basically slaves to sin and to the devil. And the Illuminati are the ultimate uh, of that because they think that they're enlightened, you know, working for the devil. So, but um, do they actually, here's the question I have about the Illuminati. Do they actually, are they self-deceived? Are they like, um... Do they believe that Satan is rewarding them, or are they atheists? What, what exactly do they believe at the higher level? And this is going to be like the final thing. Um. Uh, in their Council of Thirteen, <clears throat> one was an atheist, and the others were Luciferians. Um, yeah, they're, they're deceived. They're definitely deceived, um, although they don't realize it. Uh you know, and pride warps a person's perspective and mind. And that's and one of the reasons why... Complex. Pardon me? These people have a God complex, don't they? That's why I'm seriously concerned about this uh, Kanye West phenomenon, is his enormous pride should raise red flags to people. Um, and he still has that. He's still saying things, and he's still singing songs, that shows his ego is totally intact, and yeah. it hasn't been broken by the Holy Spirit. Yeah, there's no godly sorrow there. It's just, you know, he's just boasting about himself. Well, he comes, his pastor that everyone keeps, uh, you know, saying, oh, he came from a doctrinally sound church, but I look up the church and it teaches work salvation. You know, it's like, you know, where, where are Christians going with their mentality now or i mean do they just believe anyone who goes on tv and says they're a christian yeah and that's the bigger issue is we need to start taking discernment because the enemy is laughing at us that they can come in in a month or two just take anything a pig for that matter and they yeah. could dress it up as a christian have that pig point the yeah. right words and yeah. And everybody start following that pig or that Pied Piper. Yeah. And, and uh, there's got to be more discernment. So a guy like Kanye West is obviously, he's like a lower level actor to the Illuminati kingpins. And the kingpins themselves are, you know, obviously, you know, they, they think they're like little gods and they're Luciferians and, you know. So... From your encounters with them, before we wrap up, what do you think is the most shocking thing you've ever, from meeting these people and speaking with them? Uh, 
Shocking? Well, yeah. I'm not... Boy, that, that question get, gets me thinking. But one thing that was truly shocking is that there's no limits to how they will torture and dismember, uh, disfigure little children. Um, there's no there's no limits to the horrible things that they will do to an innocent child, mm. and um, it's mind boggling. It, it it's uh, any sane, rational person will want to almost vomit or vomit from you know, and and you probably had heard that this <coughs> uh, video that was being sold where Hillary and Abaddon uh, do yep. this ritual with this child that law enforcement were watching, and it made them sick. It, it actually traumatized all of them. Uh, you know, that's that's one of the biggest shocking things is is the the uh, I mean, it's it, the evil. It, 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 it's so beyond yeah. what a normal person's mind could imagine. Yeah, and and just uh, to give some historical examples, we know the Aztecs, um, the Canaanites, uh, like ancient empires, have always offered up the children as the sacrifice to the, you know the horned god or the, you know whatever they're worshiping. Um, and it's always the kids uh, that they offer up first. I mean, even, do you remember a book called Childhood's End? Um, it was, that was a science fiction novel from the 50s by one of these Illuminati uh, people, Arthur C. Clarke. And he was friends with Stanley Kubrick and they, you know, the NASA and all that uh, at play acting going on there. But um, uh, he basically <coughs> put an allegory where, this alien comes down, which seems to be an allegory for the elites. And this was written from the elites viewpoint. Uh, I'm surprised actually you never heard of this one because this one, uh, the alien demon creature says, we're going to take your kids. We'll give you all of these uh, pleasures of this world. If you give us your children was basically the whole thing. And of course, in the story, uh, they give the children, the children all merge into some kind of hive mind. And, uh, you know, the elites end up exterminating humanity was the, <clears throat> the uh, tr basic story. But I just want to say this. Jesus Christ said, if someone hurts one of those little ones, it's better that a mill, it, you know, it's better that, um, you know the one I'm going for? That a mill yeah. Mill yeah. It would be better that there was a millstone wrapped around them and thrown into the sea. Yeah. So it's better to have a millstone wrapped around you and being thrown into the sea than, you know, what God, you know, has prepared for you, you know, if you're doing this to children and you don't, you know, come guilty before God right now. So, you know, I just want to say that and... Uh, Thanks, Fritz. It's a great interview, brother. Uh, Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. And you've had uh, some really important subjects that we've covered. And uh, I'll say uh, have a great day and be blessed to your listeners. And thanks for listening. Yep. Amen. See you, brother. Thank you.